<laughs> Is it rolling now? Yeah. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Gregory with the Friday Forge, and this week we're going to make an epoxy river surfing tray. Since the beginning of the Friday Forge, Brigham and I always had it in our mind that we wanted to do epoxy river tables. Little did we know it would take us three years to finally do our first pour. For this project, we decided to go with olive wood from Woodworker Source in Phoenix, Arizona. Here we're cutting it down to size for our 24 by 12 inch pre-made mold. Oh yeah, Brigham had a live edge too that we decided to do at the same time. Once we get it oriented in the way we want, we go on to measuring how much epoxy to mix. All I can say is, if you want to do this right, just go to Cam at Plactail Studio and take his epoxy workshop. That's what we did. And because of this masterclass, we felt prepared to take on this project. Choosing an epoxy was quite difficult. Because we had never done this before, we tried to go with the cheaper option and kept on landing on magic resin because it seemed to be the cheapest option. Or so we thought. By the way, if you have good experience with them, let us know in the comments. The price point is nice, but maybe their epoxy isn't. Either way, we settled on super clear liquid glass deep pour epoxy. For multiple reasons. One, it's what Cam at Blacktail Studio uses. Two, I had Amazon gift cards, so even if we did mess this up, it's not like it was our money. And three, Superclear was running a 30% off sale. What makes me sad is a week later, they ran a 45% off deal. Go figure. The color we settled on was blue with white pearl, and we had quite the mixing party earlier to find out which color to use. No way. No, I don't think so. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe. So the look I was going for with my epoxy was to be a billow of smoke, pillow, bubbly looking thing. So I took out my heat gun on the lowest setting and just went in an up and down motion. After 72 hours or so, I took it out of the mold. Pro tip. Use gloves, this thing is ridiculously sharp. Everything was going good till this point. When I went to plane it, I was lazy with my sled and didn't drill down to the stop. I used duct tape instead. After all, it's a handyman's secret weapon, so at some point the stop blew up and it took out a good chunk out of my board. I did a water pop to try and lift my spirits, and my wife told me it looked good, and uh, but I was pretty bummed, because I knew I'd have to take off a lot more stock than I wanted to. I knew at this point I had to call in reinforcements to try and salvage this. So I sent it over to Brigham to plane it down properly so that he could take off a minimal amount. I was afraid I'd blow it up again, and Brigham is the more experienced woodworker. Use some tabletop epoxy to fill in any voids I had left over from planing. Then I slightly beveled the edges using a quarter inch chamfer bit. And after all that, we went on to sanding. I don't know why everybody says they don't enjoy sanding, it's pretty fun. Brigham and I have always used walrus oil, but we've always been intrigued with Odie's oil. So for this project, we took on that price tag and went for it. Needless to stay, until we start going to do tables and use Rubio Monocoat, we've converted to Odie's. It's just as simple as rub on and buff off. Because the stock was so thin, I decided not to use handles and use felt pads instead. 
for the final reveal, let me show you how Brigham's turned out. And because we had to take off so much stock from my tray, I was able to make two incense holders out of it. We hope you enjoyed watching us make our first proxy projects. And if you like what you see, they'll be available on Etsy in the link below. And if they're not there, shoot us a message. I'm sure we can make you one. Thanks for watching.